WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. You know, we have fun around here. I'm, I'm so proud of myself for branching out and having these conversations above and beyond sports all these years. Uh, we are going to be having uh, the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We will be back to sports in March Madness on Friday at Costas. We'll be downtown at Fadley's having a crab cake, all of it presented by our friends at the Maryland Lottery, letting ourselves play. But expanding the conversations, and uh, my friend Karen gets me great guests all the time. But uh, and I'm always promoting good causes with her and she feeds me food and Sante's coming up in a couple of months for uh, to help the uh, National Kidney uh, Association. So I, I would just say this. I I'll have anybody on that Karen wants me to have. A, but when somebody comes on talking music and we're talking about something that's sort of in my wheelhouse, this becomes fun. Mark Osteen is here to represent the Baltimore uh, Chamber Jazz Society. Now, I must say, I think I've heard of you as a society, but uh, I need to know more. And when I get a bio and there's backgrounds and Beatles and Stones and Zeppelins and Floyds and things like that, that's when I can sink my teeth in and say, you know, I'm getting a little older, a little more quiet. And uh, I do all of my writing to smooth jazz, Mark. So uh, welcome aboard, uh, making beautiful music and saxophone music and great sounds. I need to learn about the Baltimore Chamber Jazz Society. Great. I'm well, happy to fill you in. It's a nonprofit. We've been around since the 90s. So this is 30 years of bringing uh, national jazz artists to Baltimore, uh, except for last year, of course, so we couldn't do anything because no one could go anywhere. Um, and uh, our first concert coming up April 10th is Stefan Harrison Blackout. Really great group. He's an educator. He plays vibes. I don't know if you know too much about vibes and marimba, you know, with the mallets. Okay. Yeah, and he's a really good group. They, they're they really varied. They do everything from, you know, like reimaginings of classic jazz to like art, contemporary R&B kinds of stuff. You'll like it. It's a real varied album. Well, listen, I'm a music guy. Uh, I know you're a musician uh, from way back. And uh, what a story you have, right? I mean, <laughs> you, you, you did you have long hair and play in a rock and roll band back in the 70s? Is that how all this starts? And uh, does oh, it start yeah. with the Beatles on Ed Sullivan or... <laughs> <laughs> You're just about got it just about right. That's right. I played rock bands all through college and high school and then even in graduate graduate school. I was the front man, believe it or not. Yes, there used to be hair up here, but no longer, you know. Yeah, see, I've grown my the, the pandemic, I've got the I've got rock and roll hair for the for the first time since nineteen ninety four. I've gone full on, right. man. So nice. I, you know, I I'm bringing the seventies back. So uh, That's what I know. used to look like. Well, fair, fair enough. So you're in a band. Were you like Sting and then you just made the turn to jazz around 83? Uh, actually, it was right after I got we got to Baltimore. I mean, I still was playing rock music when I lived in Atlanta and during the 80s. And uh, when I got here, all of a sudden I started feeling a little old for the rock scene. And uh, I played the sax. And right so on. That, the action on saxophones in jazz, you know, it's not really in rock. So I decided I'm going to well, get tell better. Clarence Clemens that. Come on now. Well, yeah, but he's a he's an outsider. You know, he's not one. <laughs> of the, he's one of the few. Let's put it that way. So, you know, I started getting my jazz chops up and looking for places to play. And then I got involved in founding the Baltimore Jazz Alliance in about 2004. And then looked to this organization, which has been bringing jazz to Baltimore for 30 years. Uh, about 10 years ago, I got on the board. You know, I still like to listen to rock, but, you know, I mostly listen to what I play. So, you know, if you want to play stuff, you listen to what you play and then you learn the songs and that's how it works. What do you but play? Like what, what do you play these days? I mean, if you were learning Steve Miller songs back 45 years ago and you're trying to get a game, I was listening to some Frampton this morning, right? So, yeah. like, but but when you play music and you, you aspire to go out and play for other people, where – where does that continuum lie from moving on? Hey, I, I'll tell you, as I'm getting older too, I still love Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and the Stones, and I'm I'm into all of that. Rod Stewart, what a cheap trick, all of that. But as I I, I sort of go back, to, I'm listening to Duran Jones now. I'm listening to more like soul music, uh, I think, and smooth jazz music without lyrics. Um, I find smooth jazz to be the music I work the best to. Yeah. And I don't know the artist. I don't know the songs. If it's on a television, I can look up and say, oh, that's a nice song. But mm -hmm. I, I find it to be wonderful, creative background music for me as a, when I'm writing, when I'm trying to be creative. I understand that. Lots of people do that. Uh, the words get in the way, right? So you just want instrumental music when you're as background. You know, for me, though, I, I, with what, what you play, so you listen to what you play and you try to learn that. 
So I uh, learned stuff off the record or, you know, a lot of younger artists. And uh, of course, younger than me is not saying much, Nestor, because everybody's younger than me at this point. But um, I think you have a young so I can tell you have young mojo about you. You know, <laughs> I like to think so. Uh, I couldn't I can name you people, but I, I listen to so many different people that you might not know who they are. I mean, it's mostly straight, straight mainstream jazz, but um, also uh, crossover stuff, R&B, like in terms of singers. You, are you familiar with Gregory Porter? Sure. Really outstanding singer. He's my favorite right now. And Kurt Elling, they're the two male vocalists that I like to listen to a lot. Uh, they humble me because they're so much better than I am. But that's good because, you know, like, that's singing right there. You know, that's why golfers that. golf, right? And they watch the Masters yeah. and they, they say, huh, they, I'm, I'm humble by what they can do that I can't do. Well, there's that feeling always at a concert. I hear a player like, oh, God, I might as well just quit. I'm never going to get as good as he is. And then I go home and go, no, now I'm inspired. I can get, you know, I can practice and get better. So there's that mix there, you know. Um, the rock stuff is more, honestly, a little bit more nostalgic for me because I remember when I, certain tunes, like, oh, God, I remember the club where I played that tune, you know what I mean, many times. Or I remember working up that tune, you know, in 1980 or whatever it was. So there's more of a... Uh, place and time kind of thing with with rock. I still like to listen to the classic rock though, for sure. And my son, who's in his early 30s, he likes classic rock also. So it rubbed off, you know. Mark Osteen is here. Uh, the Baltimore Chamber Jazz Society has um, has shows coming up throughout the spring. And I think, listen, for anybody who loves music, we remember this, this is sort of the two year anniversary of the plague, as we all remember. Yeah. And um, you know, get locked in the house. And I remember my wife not only watching Ray Bachman, my former producer, do trivia nights uh, and laughing uh, with wine. I think I think wine and tequila were involved. But finding musicians no. that are friends of mine, like Ed Lauer and Jason Seymour and different people that were using their 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 phone in their basement making music yeah. musicians i love uh i mentioned sticks i mean i remember tommy shaw doing a piano thing and dennis de young did a piano thing and it became like an internet thing to create yeah. music and tributes um I would say that was the one thing during this where I really wish I played guitar. You know, I built my business. I, I transformed my sports company. I, I went into my own hole and did my own creativity thing. But if I were a musician and I think about creativity for musicians, it was a time to say, you know, let's go in the studio and make something or no. to your point, learn something, get new chops, pick up new skills, whatever it would be. But I, I would think, um, the, the person in their instrument during that period of time, uh, best friend, right? Oh, yeah. Well, at first, we, everybody was shocked. Like, what do I do? There's no gigs, and there's a little bit of a slump. What am I practicing for? Because I've got nothing to play for. But then, you know, musicians are resilient people. So we figured out a way to make it work. So you do a solo thing, a duo thing. Uh, a lot of us got um, audio interfaces so we could use these online things and play, you know, at the same Bands time. Bands made whole albums without yeah, being in the same absolutely. room, right? And so we That's figured it out. That's the way Elton John and Bernie Taupin did things, right? They exactly. were never in the same room. Oh, right? yeah, sure. Famous. And so, you know, it's nice being with people. You want to be with people. That's part of the great thing about being a musician is you've got a little team there. All the bonding and everything is really wonderful. But if you can't do it, you figure it out. Also, you know, the, one of the biggest losses for me was like, there's no audience out there. And, you know, we love playing for people. We like being with people. And um, so we're really happy that Chamber Jazz is coming back because it's been two years, you know, no people. Uh, I remember the last concert we had exactly two years ago. And one of the people on the board said, you know, there's this pandemic coming. And, you know, history says it's going to be at least 18 months. And we're like, ah, oh, nah, nah, it'll be a few weeks. And he actually underestimated the time, two years. So, man, we're looking forward to getting back in that auditorium and hearing some live music. Man, it's been so long. And, um, you know, when I played a couple of times, you know, when it was, things were relaxing a little bit last fall, it was so great to get back in front of people. I mean, that's what we live for. That's what musicians live for is, you know, being with the people. So we want that to happen again. Yes, we figured out how to do it alone, but... That, you know, that's not optimal, Nestor. That's not what we want to do. We want to be with the people. 
Well, the crazy concert goer in me and the sports guy who's made a living doing this professionally for three decades now, when the plague happened, sports was teetering. It went away yep. and then it came back sort of we couldn't go. And I went and empty arena, you know, empty stadia watching weird. games for no one. I, you know, I, I did some of that weirdness and, and I talked at length, especially that first summer where my wife and I were walking uh, over to, to Fells Point just to see Ed Lauer play yep. out of the second floor of the Admiral's Cup yeah. outside with masks on <laughs> on 70 uh-huh. degree days where we could drink cold beer um, at a reasonable price. And, and I, I once concerts started coming back and I said all along the first night at Merriweather and I did a big segment last week on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour uh, presented mm-hmm. by the Maryland Lottery over at El Guapo with Ian Kennedy from Merriweather and saying that night out on the lawn with the first beer after the mess is over. And I sort of am getting that vibe again. Look, I was at the garden a couple of weeks ago. I saw John Mayer. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I flew down to Raleigh to see the Eagles a couple of weeks ago too, just because, um, you know, hockey games, basketball games, baseball games, it's not the same as no. going to a concert and seeing a performance. Maybe it's the winners and losers or the cheering. Maybe it's just that I'm getting old and I feel like I've seen everything you can do with a basketball, with a basket on ice, <laughs> on a field, yeah. with a fence, with a ball, with an umpire. Uh, I've done all that for all my life. There's still something about seeing John Mayer in his prime, you know, at 44 and going to right. Madison Square Garden and seeing him play with members of Eric Clapton's band, Greg Phil and Gaines and uh, uh-huh. uh, Steve Ferroni and just these incredible musicians that I um, that's still really special to me. And yeah. and it's and, and it wouldn't you know, whether it's Elton John or whether it's Rod, so whatever your flavor is, Dead and Company, whatever you're going to go see. But for any musician to be putting something on to have a crowd. And that's why I want to promote what you're doing. What am I going to find when I come to one of your gigs? Cause I mean, we all know the Merriweather experience or seeing the stones in a stadium or, uh, yeah. you, you know, Paul McCartney's playing the, the Camden yards. W- w- what does a chamber jazz society event feel like? Yeah, that's a great question, Nestor. It's sort of the opposite of those arena kind of shows. I mean, it's intimate. It's in the BMA auditorium. I don't know if you've been there. It seats 350. So where is the BMA auditorium? Let's go. In the BMA, it's in the Baltimore Museum of Art. Go in, up the stairs, on the right, right there. Perfect. Um, and uh, you know, this you, you're 20 feet from the performers. At the break, they come out, sign CDs. You can meet the people. Everybody there is into the performance. They don't have their phones out. They're looking at the audience. There's a lot of back and forth. You know how jazz audiences are. They clap for solos. It's it's intimate. It's it's a place where there's a lot of back and forth between the performers and the and the audience. Can I so, drink wine? Is that's important? Can yeah, I? Yeah, you can wine? get wine from Gertrude's right. and bring it in. Yeah, now listen, can we talk about Gertrude's for a second? Because mm-hmm. I do something here called the Maryland Crab Cake Tour, and I have been told that Gertrude's has a vegan crab cake, like a take on a crab cake, yeah. and I. I've got to, you got to get me to the Gertrude's. I got to, I got to do a crab cake at Gertrude's. I've been told. And, and I have people that are shellfish intolerant on the crab cake tour. And they're like, look, I can have a burger. I can have, or, or they're vegan. And they're like, I don't eat meat. So therefore I don't eat crab. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to come up with this. So I, Gertrude's is a big, big red bold target on my Maryland crab cake tour. So I'm glad you said that partnering yeah, okay. with, uh, and art music. This feels like it all sort of flows together. My wife and I did uh, did Longwood Gardens uh, a uh-huh. couple of summers. That's hey man, the plague forced us to do all the things we had on the list that were like we'll get around to yeah. that when the football game's over, thing. when the concert's over. It was a good over. thing for you, wasn't it? <laughs> so, so to me, well, we've also had the director of BMA uh, give me the experience of doing it this way because there really is something about driving down near Hopkins on a beautiful spring night. Yeah. Park in the car, getting a crab or vegan crab cake, whatever you want, or pork chop, whatever, whatever they have at Gertrude's. I've been there before. It's lovely. And, and a glass of wine and, and making making an event, making an evening of it, because so much of what I'm talking about the last two years has been really hard to make evenings, make special yeah. events. You know, we're all looking to do something special again in the spring, right? Well, here's the great thing, Nestor. The shows are at five on Sunday. So you go in for the show. You have your glass of wine, listen to two sets of jazz. Maybe you buy your CD. Then you go to dinner. After that, and there's more music later. You're out of there by 7.30, so your evening is still young. You've already heard a great performance. Then you can go to Gertrude's, have a nice meal, or you can go do something else, you know, catch a club downtown later. 
So we do the five at five because I don't know if you remember the Left Bank Jazz Society all through the 60s and 70s. They had concerts Sundays at five at the famous ballroom, which was right where the Charles Theater is now, right on okay. North Charles Street, right by the by the train station. Um, so, you know, artists would come right in. Right by there. the Chesapeake restaurant where my it's uncle. Right next uh, yeah, absolutely. My uncle Omar was the wine oh, simulator. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We've talked so, about the triple sec. Yep. So that's the that's tradition we're picking up on. Sundays at five. That's when Left Bank did it. So that's when we do it. And it seems to work out well because there's not a lot of conflicts. For Sunday at five. Well, I'm going to pull this up. Uh, anybody that's watching yeah. out online, welcome in. Mark Osteen is here. I am pronouncing that right. Osteen, correct? Yes, that's right. All right. There we go. Baltimore Ch Chamber Jazz Society. Uh, current season's up. You can find all the dates. Uh, they're going to be kicking this thing off uh, beginning on April 10th, correct? Yes. April 10th. Stefan Harris and Black at 5 p.m. performance. You can click, find out all about this. If you love music, if you love events, if you've been cooped up at home too long like I have, your hair's been growing long, you want to go out and, uh, and have a great evening. Mark, uh, you know, I, I guess from the, the jazz perspective and listening to jazz music and having opportunities, it there's a whole open door for people. And I'll give you a little baseball door for me. I did 30 okay. ballparks in 30 days. Uh, when my wife was diagnosed with leukemia back in 2014, mm -hmm. we did it for there goes my hero and, uh, swabbing. And we were out in Kansas city and I've been to Kansas city many times, I've had the ribs, I've had the steak. I've been to the football stadium, the baseball stadium. I'm an old school fan and all that, but they have a wonderful, um, uh, baseball hall of fame yeah. that chronicles the, the, the Negro leagues. And it's not really a hall of fame. It's a library. So I want to make sure yeah. I get that right. And it's attached to the jazz museum as well. Right. And it's a two for one. You know, you stop by, you get both tickets for 15, Man. 20 bucks, whatever it is. I got to check that one out. Dude, the Kansas sure. City. It, yeah. Well, they have listening stations, right? Oh, so wow. it's Louis Armstrong and Satch, but it's like all of that. Right. And um, so anybody gets a chance to do that. But from a jazz perspective and, and things that you have experienced, what are some things that I'm missing along Jazz Highway? The things that I maybe I should I should know more about from an old rock and roll soul like you. <laughs> well, go back to Kansas City, first of all, because that's that's where Bebop was born, because that's where Charlie Parker's from. And he was the alto sax player that one of the founders of Bebop. And so that's where that all began. So Kansas City is a great place to go. Um, you should go to New Orleans if you haven't gone there. I'm sure you've been in New Orleans many times. We we, <laughs> we, yeah. we won a Super Bowl there. We, yeah, well, there <laughs> I you don't go. remember much of it. but <laughs> Chicago, big jazz mecca. Chicago is a place where lots of jazz got, people got their started, and it's got a great jazz uh, scene there. The Green Miles, an outstanding club you got to go to in Chicago if, you, if you're in Chicago there. That's still open. Excellent people play there. By the in way, Baltimore, my, 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 one of my dearest there. friends tried to drag me to the Green Mile yeah. On a Saturday night four months ago. No no kidding. Uh, we were at, yeah. like, we just ran out of gas. We was a little tired. It was a Saturday night. We were going to uh -huh. do it, and then we didn't do it. So now that you've mentioned it, there's serendipity. I'm headed back to Chicago in a few weeks to hang there out with go. this guy and eat some Pequod's pizza. So um, now that you've Green mentioned Mile. it, that's what we're going to wind up doing, right? That's for you, man. Green Mile is where you got to go. Go there. Scott's going to uh, appreciate you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great club. It's history. It's all history. Chicago's outstanding for live music, as you well know. So he kept saying to me, dude, we got to go to this place. No, you don't want to. You don't know. You don't understand, <laughs> dude. We got to go to this place. That's yeah. what he kept saying to me. You need to go there. So make your tour, you know, go to a Cubbies game and then head the head to the Green Mile afterwards. See, this is where I am in life, though. <laughs> I, and I'm not being a jerk. It could, you know, like. I just I've been to a lot of Cubbies games. I've been to a lot of White Sox games. Yeah. My name, my last name's on the facade on the south I guess side. I for wall. the White Sox. Isn't yeah, it? like yeah. you know, I like I worked in Chicago, turned the century. Retired, but I've all. never been to a jazz club in Chicago. I well, I, I will say that I've not done that. So, uh, um, Mark, I've enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I'll get everybody out to the website uh, and and let me tell everybody where to find you and find everything that you do because um, you know more than that, you're local people putting on a good thing. We are. BaltimoreChamberJazz.org, or you can call, it's 410-385-5888, or you can, you know, call me if you want to, uh, 
I markostein.com you can get in touch with me on by, by my website if you'd like to now listen man i went up to your your bio and i you know i read on and I, i've been a lot of places it's one of like the my charms you know um i'm finally for the first time right this moment googling libby montana to try to figure out exactly <laughs> where it is and yeah, whether i've so ever <laughs> been there i have not been there I but i have been, been on there. 90 in spokane and coeur d'alene and okay. wallace and i've been to missoula a couple times one of my best friends in life moved to great falls so I, I wanted to google where the libby montana is man you're <laughs> way up north dog you're way like west of whitefish and uh, right. uh, matt stover and todd heap have been there because they have a place up by you but Did that's they? Man, you've come a long way. What? How did you get to Baltimore before I let you go? What made, What brought you here? I got to Baltimore because there was a job here. So I went to grad school at Emory in Atlanta, and that got us out of Montana. And I've been playing in rock bands and everything. And then I had to be got smart out. to get into Emory. I remember that, man. That was a serious well, place. I'll tell you what, that was a turning point because Atlanta was really hopping at the time. And so we were young. It was like, yay, we got someplace cool. And then um, you know, I got my PhD. And so like looking for jobs, there was a job in Baltimore. I got the job. That's how I got here. And we've stayed here ever since 88. So now I've now I'm Baltimorean, you know. Do you secretly wish you were like an REM or something back in the day or no? You went over to Athens. Kind of then, yeah. I was really into them that music at the time. So yeah. I mean that they're from um, Athens, but you know, UGA, but that was a real lively scene there. Yeah. Hey man, I appreciate the conversation. I'll send everybody out to uh see you and and let everybody Gertrude's know. I'm coming. I will. You know, I've heard I've April heard 10th. stories. April 10th is our first show. Come on out. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Bye -bye. Mark Ghosting joining us here from Libby, Montana to Baltimore <laughs> to right, right to the BMA, professor of literature, author, and musician, board member of the Baltimore Chamber Jazz Society. Now I see I've heard about it. Now I've learned more about it. A little history of jazz there. Uh, a little Charlie yeah. Parker as well. So we, we appreciate that. I am Nestor. We are WNST. We're going to be getting back out on the road of the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery, as well as our friends at Goodwill Industries. Can be telling you uh, more about them as well. We got NFL free agency going on. Luke's got it all hooked up with the uh, WNST tech service with our friends at Coons Ford Security Boulevard. So any breaking news, signings, we're going to play some baseball. All sorts of things are going to happen around here. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.